Hey guys, welcome back to Blender beginner series. This is the continuation of the last video. If you guys didn't watch that video, do watch it and come back. I will give it the I button. So <clears throat> we are discussing on about active elements in the last video. Now let's discuss on transform orientation. Right now we are in global transform. So what happens in global transform is if we rotate the subject, if you rotate, you will see the center. Uh, I think I mean the pivot of this cube is rotating. It's only rotating on the global axis. It's uh, locked within the center. If I go and lock in, we will see the pivot is rotating within the cube so that somewhere something like this if we rotate something like this we will get a new axis here this is really, this is a cool feature in blender also this is really important there are more or transform orientations like norman gimbal views cursor parrot that's not much important just tweak with global and lock in axis now there is an option here which is called transform pivot point I will delete this cube and add a cylinder and a spear, give me a spear here. I will move the cylinder here. So what this what this does is if I select these two and rotate, this is rotating like this now. Wait. If I change the option to bounding box center, then I select these two and rotate. We will see this is rotating from the center. I will go to top view. If it was rotate, this is rotating from the center. It's assuming there is, assuming the center of the two meshes and rotating. If I change this to 3D cursor, we have set a 3D cursor here. So it will rotate from the 3D cursor. Now if I change to individual origins, these two meshes will rotate from their own individual origins. If I sell to media point, it will rotate like this. Something similar to bounding box center. If I change to active element, now the active element is the cylinder. cylinder. I will change the active element to the sphere and if I rotate we will see the cylinder is orbiting the sphere now if I move this cube to X axis, so to Y axis, you will see the center of this cube. This is the pivot, this is the center of this cube. If I want to change, yeah. if I want to change the center to somewhere uh, in the edge, so simply shift and right click for the world origin to come here, then right click, set origin to 3D cursor. Sorry. So it turns into, yes, it turns into three degrees. Then if I rotate, this will rotate from, this will consider that point as the center and it will rotate, that pivot will rotate there. So another important option in Blender is snapping. This, this is snapping and this is its settings. So if I click on increment and move this skew, we can see thus this, this be snapping to this 3D port. Similarly, it happens in this grid as well. If you want to snap two objects, if I press on vertex and select this object and came towards to the closest vertex of this object, it will snap here. To this vertex, now this cube is snapped towards this vertex. If I change to the edge, 
I can snap it in the edge of this cube. So there's another important feature in Blender is I will add a Unisphere to work on Shade Smooth. Just duplicate this small the size. If I turn on face project and also align rotation to target, I will move and you can see this is snapping on the surface of this 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 sphere. You can see it is already snapping to the surface. This is one of the coolest coolest thing in Blender. So before I'm going into the edit mode, let's quickly make a simple model from what we studied. The cube here now. Uh, uh, let's try to make something a uh, low poly car which is used in flash games. Can we scale to y axis making more like this? Duplicate this. Then press X. G to move it in the x axis. Is that axis? Sorry. Again, scale it to y axis, little more lower like this. And I will enable the snapping to vertex G and we disable this G and snap it. Okay. Something like this, and I'm adding cylinder. Like this. Take So now we have something look like a car. I want to be random colors to here and run the maze. I know this is not as good, but I don't want to make you guys so complicated. So we will discuss uh, about ed editing mode and more tools in the next chapter. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Thank you.